lines along both borders of the great range, and maintained posts at these points where fresh horses were always in readiness to bear his errand riders to Rohan in the north, or to Belfalas in the south. "'It is long since the beacons of the north were lit,' he said, "'and in the ancient days of Gondor they were not needed, for they had the seven stones.' Pippin stirred uneasily. "'Sleep again, and do not be afraid.' said Gandalf. For you're not going like Frodo to Mordor, but to Minas Tirith, and there you will be as safe as you can be anywhere in these days. If Gondor falls, or the ring is taken, then the Shire will be no refuge. You don't comfort me, said Pippin, but nonetheless sleep crept over him. The last thing that he remembered before he fell into deep dream was a glimpse of high white peaks, glimmering like floating isles above the clouds as they caught the light of the westering moon. He wondered where Frodo was, and if he was already in Mordor, or if he was dead. And he didn't know that Frodo, from far away, looked on that same moon as it set beyond Gondor ere the coming of the day. Pippin woke to the sound of voices. Another day of hiding and a night of journey had fleeted by. It was twilight. The cold dawn was at hand again, and chill grey mists were about them. Shadowfax stood steaming with sweat, but he held his neck proudly and showed no sign of weariness. Many tall men, heavily cloaked, stood beside him, and behind them in the mist loomed a wall of stone. Partly ruinous, it seemed, but already before the night was past the sound of hurried labour could be heard, beat of hammers, clink of trowels, and the creak of wheels. Torches and flares glowed dully here and there in the fog. Gandalf was speaking to the men that barred his way, and as he listened, Pippin became aware that he himself was being discussed. "'Yea, truly we know you, Mithrander,' said the leader of the men. "'And you know the passwords of the seven gates and are free to go forward. But we don't know your companion. What is he?' "'A dwarf out of the mountains in the north? "'We wish for no strangers in the land at this time, "'unless they be mighty men of arms "'in whose faith and help we can trust.' "'I will vouch for him before the seat of Denethor, said Gandalf. "'And as for valour, that cannot be computed by stature. "'He's passed through more battles and perils than you have in gold, "'though you be twice his height, "'and he comes now from the storming of Isengard, "'of which we bear tidings.' and great weariness is on him, or I would wake him. His name is Peregrine, a very valiant man. "'Man?' said Ingold dubiously, and the others laughed. "'Man?' cried Pippin, now thoroughly aroused. "'Man, indeed not. I am a hobbit, and no more valiant than I am a man, save perhaps now and again by necessity. Do not let Gandalf deceive you.' "'Many a doer of great deeds might say no more,' said Ingold. "'But what is a hobbit?' "'A halfling,' answered Gandalf. "'Nay, not the one that was spoken of,' he added, seeing the wonder in the men's faces. "'Not he, yet one of his kindred.' "'Yes, and the one who journeyed with him,' said Pippin. "'And Boromir of your city was with us, and he saved me in the snows of the north, and at the last he was slain defending me from many foes.' "'Peace,' said Gandalf. "'The news of that grief should have been told first to the father.' "'It has been guessed already,' said Ingold. "'For there have been strange portents here of late. "'But pass on now quickly, "'for the Lord of Minas Tirith will be eager to see any "'that bear the latest tidings of his son, "'be he man or hobbit,' said Pippin. "'Little service can I offer to your lord, "'but what I can do, I would do.' "'remembering Boromir the Brave. "'Fare you well,' said Ingold, "'and the men made way for Shadowfax, "'and he passed through a narrow gate in the wall. "'May you bring good counsel to Denethor in his need, "'and to us all, Mithranda,' Ingold cried. "'But you come with tidings of grief and danger, "'as is your wont, they say. "'Because I come seldom but when my help is needed,' "'answered Gandalf. "'And as for counsel,' "'To you I would say that you are over late in repairing the wall of the Pelennor. "'Courage will now be your best defence against the storm that is at hand. "'That and such hope as I bring. "'For not all the tidings...